Recorda is a distributed ledger for the recording, management, and execution of financial agreements. Hey everybody, in this video of Proof of Make, we take a look at R3 and Corda. Let's start with R3. R3 is an enterprise consortium made up of many large companies that all have the need to lower the friction around sharing data with one another. R3 originally built Corda specifically for financial services firms to deal with complex interest rate swaps and derivatives and allow bank A and bank B to communicate with one another in a new way whereby they could share data while keeping those transactions private and allowing, let's say, Bank C to interact with Bank A without being aware of Bank A and Bank B's transactions. In this video, we're going to look at the core dApps, which are the Corda decentralized applications, their marketplace, as well as deploy a Corda distributed ledger and, and move around some IOUs and take a look at the code and see what's actually happening. We're going to do that with our CTO tie. Let's take a look. All right, so now we're gonna sit down with our CTO, Ty, and take a look at Corda. All right, Ty, so All right. You, we're, we're familiar with Corda. We used it back in 2016 yep. when it yep. first launched. So R3 has <laughs> a very, you know, has a lot of banks and <laughs> large, large companies in their, in their network. So these are all members of the consortium. It looks pretty international as well. Yeah, and their, their core product, it's right here at the top, is the Corda platform. So let's take a look at the quarter website. All right. So they started focusing mostly on uh, banking institutions. Okay. Financial services. Yeah, firms. I remember that. And uh, now, as you can see, they've kind of they're kind of focusing on blockchain for business in general. All right. Let's take a look. So their all their code is open source. So you can run your own quarter distributed ledger. Okay. You know they, they want you to start with the example Corda app, right? And so. You know, they give you, you know, all, talk about all the instructions. That's definitely some documentation. What's your, right what's your, let's talk about the end of what you're here. So I'm running a node right now. Okay. And um, what I'm able to do is create an IOU uh, here with the, this is just a pseudonym a part. This is, can be this changed in the, the settings. Okay. So um, this counterparty, this node is party C, location Paris. And I'm going to create an IOU for $1, right? So I click create IOU. And then you see here, I can see the transaction ID. All right. So yeah, if I try to send one over, let's say a thousand dollars, the smart contract is set so that uh, you that the person won't accept IOUs over a hundred okay. dollars. So so you can see here, I'll, I'll get like a little error here. Okay, so, so it's actually console. hard coded to not let that. Yeah, so you can so you can change that. So let's talk about the actual code. So. This website is using Angular JS, okay. And as you can see here, it's communicating with the base API API slash example that actually goes here. So the API is written in Kotlin, All right, which so is better Java, the, the, right? The Java variant. Yeah. yeah, and so it has a service, blah blah blah, and it has all the you know, the Git path me, get information on me, uh, get the peers. So then, so it's importing the IOU schema. So this is also written in Kotlin, and this kind of defines a little bit of how. Um, how IOUs work, right? There's a lender, there's a borrower, oh, right. right? Since these nodes are running on, on various ports, then the web server connects into the Corda ledger. So that, can you make really flexible smart contracts then that can do all sorts of crazy stuff? Yeah, so um, they, they're just calling them the core dApps, right? Core and dApps. They're, yeah, they're, 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 they're quite robust. Yeah. As you can see here, you know, there's, there's a lot that goes into to that. And uh, I should actually be using the uh, IntelliJ environment, but this is just for demos to, to demonstrate. So it also, it's, it's pretty easy to uh, set up. So if you look over here, um, when you set up your Corda ledger, you can set up you know notaries, different parties uh, that can interact. And then you go to the node.comp file and you're able to uh, actually set so everyone's authenticated oh, wow. by their by their IP address. So Whoa. if I change this, so I change cool. this, so if I change this to an IP address, right, then you can run the application and it'll it'll actually allow you to connect in. So you can run a Corda node and then you can connect in with my application. So it's right. easy to distribute this across. That's why it's a distributed distributed ledger, right? So uh, back to R3, um, they what, what I think is really cool is they have this directory and of all the of the core apps. So at marketplace.r3.com slash solutions, okay. you can actually see all of the different core apps that are built. Now, most of these, for example, if you click on, um, let's say, American Option is a core app that allows nodes to issue, trade, and exercise call and put options. So as you can see, that's the kind of stuff you'll hear. Automated issuances, 
is a solution that is designed to be applicable across a range of corporate issuances, right? This is a decentralized application for managing generation distribution and re reconciliation of invoices, right? So these are all things that are built for the financial services industry, and you can click on them. The thing is, most of these, if you go down, they're all in prototype stage. Okay. So what's, what, the thing is, it's like you're like, wow, that's really cool, and they all have screenshots and stuff, but uh, they're mostly coming soon. But you can go here and look at the dev stage and click on production. And then you can get a list. So you can, right. these are the actual ones I mean, that you still... can actually use. So these are the, um, the 10 major production apps that are that are out there. So this one's for the insurance industry. So if I go to actually, if I go to Blockshare's website, what they'll tell me first is, and you'll notice with this, like you're like, oh, let's get started with this. It's a kind of a contact us get started. So all these are enterprise solutions. Yeah, so you contact them and then they are running quarter on their back end and they, you know, they may give you credentials or they might get you to run a quarter note. But I'm imagining most people just kind of run Run, they, the service providers provide all of the hosting and all that stuff uh, for people, um, and that's what I'm kind of getting okay. the, the sense of. So, so that that's essentially kind of how it works. And one, um, so yeah, so these are some of the DApps. And you know what I think is really cool about this stuff for other blockchain companies is to actually take a look at just the general POC stuff, right? Because what you'll see here is just a slew of problems that people need solved. That also other blockchain platforms could 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 take a Step look at, in. right? Um, so I think I think that that's why one one of the cool things I thought I thought about this because I was looking at like wow like this this is these are some major problems that need to be solved, and these are actually the solutions to solving them. So um, but but yeah you know if you're looking for a blockchain solution and not just a distributed ledger solution, right. and and different companies have different needs. So people who are looking for distributed ledger technology that are um, in, in the way that that court is positioning it. Uh, these will be good, but I, I think that for all of those, there are equal or maybe even more people on the who on the blockchain side might need things. So um, I think that's really cool. And uh, yeah, that's an early look at uh, R3 and Corda. I think my favorite part um, was on the business end, that marketplace where you can see where the dApps are and they're collected and derivatives on the blockchain, as you know, is one of my kind of secret hopes for the space. And so, like, I, I, this looks really positive. It looks cool. Um, I'm interested in kind of digging myself into kind of how to deploy things and see where it's at now since the last time we looked at it. So. Yeah, I think so. I think one of the, the, the things about it, though, is that um, obviously, I think it's really hard for corporations to set us up. Now, obviously, Corda or R3, you know, wants to come in, they'll, they'll, they'll integrate it with your current system, et right. cetera. I think that's the play. Um, but for like, just for regular people, it's really kind of like you, you deploy you deploy a distributed a distributed ledger technology a ledger right and then you know you could just use a regular blockchain for most of the stuff that you'd want to do mm -hmm. obviously transactions are free but there's other solutions out there um, and then also I mean it's for business yeah yeah and I was like for businesses most you know most business coders are writing in Java right so you have you know and 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 with, in Kotlin which is very you know similar but uh, it's very kind of robust and one thing I forgot to mention about these smart contracts. Uh, that they have is that Corda smart contracts are deterministic. So unlike other ones, they always either they can only accept or reject a, a, a transaction. So they have to they have to accept or reject a transaction. And I also uh, forgot to mention um, an aspect about doorman. So each each network, each quarter network has a doorman who decides whether to let you in or not. And all the different networks on Corda, all the different ledgers have doormen. So if I'm on one ledger over here and then across the street, let's say over at one of the banks, they have, you know, a, a different Corda ledger. Is if that doorman lets us in, right, then which is just, you know, high, you know, like, you know, their gateway, their gateway right. in, then we can enter in and then we actually share data between our two ledgers. Okay, so, so the whole sharing between okay, ledgers thing okay. is really interesting. And that's what they're really focused on. So basically yeah, so the, each each Corda instance has or DAP even seems to have its own built-in membership services. So you can create very small networks or very big networks. And very small networks that connect into big networks as well. Even cooler. Yeah. So that's a look at Corda. All right, Corda, for business.